Alright, we're recording. I'll sit here. You sit there? Yep. Alright, I'll tell you when. Ready? Tell me when. <laughs> when? <laughs> Where when? Okay. Alright, Walker. Alright, this is episode two of our podcast. Episode two of our podcast. Yes. So it's been a busy week. It has been a very busy week. A very busy weekend. So what would I think we Wednesday? We were supposed to shoot on Monday. No, we were gonna shoot on Saturday. Oh, you're right. We were gonna shoot on Saturday, and then we said we would do su Sunday morning, but and we then... weren't able to do that. And then it's been, and now it's Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but it was a busy week because we launched the podcast yep. on Saturday. Yep. All right. Yep. So right now we're at sixty subscribers and. A little over 90 followers on our new Instagram page, uh, if you haven't followed that yet. Yeah, so follow us on our Instagram page. We're going to be putting a lot of fun content there. Yes. Um, beyond... You've been hard at work at doing that right now. Thank you. Yeah. I have, I've been having fun. It's a place where I've been able to be a little bit more creative. I um, hope I can do some of that too. Like, you can show me how to do all that sort of creativeness. Do all the, uh, like the... The, the Ewok edited. one. That you oh, you, you like earlier. the Ewok one? I did Ewok like one? the Ewok one. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, no, all of a sudden I'm feeling nervous that we're not recording. Can you get up and just take a peek? I think we are recording now. Okay, you think we're recording? Yeah, we are recording. Okay, <laughs> just double checking. <laughs> we can't see it because we were facing well, the... We need to get a mirror for We have that. to get the mirror so we can see that the number of times. We can just get a cheap mirror, too. We can, and I can just attach it to that little stand that we have yeah. there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, our second podcast. Yeah. Number two. And the first one was just to get to know us, who yeah. we were. Why we started the podcast yeah. in the first place. And then the second one, so we, the plan is, is that we take turns mm -hmm. each week. Um, we take turns who brings up the topic yep. that we're going to talk about, right? Yep. Um, and I had suggested for number two is that we jump right into talking about Star Wars movies. Yep. Because our podcast, you had originally wanted to do a podcast that was Star Wars based. Yep. yep. And... I had suggested doing it more broad because I thought it would be... You think there are... I mean, there are a lot of Star Wars podcasts out there yeah. like that are all about Star Wars and such, so... Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of them. But also, I just think we have so many other things we can talk about. We do. Like, we have a lot of other common interests that aren't just Star Wars. I know. However, at the heart of it all... It's Star Wars. It's Star Wars. It's it all, Star Wars. Yep. It's, it started with... I mean, I, I think that's what we probably bond... I mean, I, it's I, what I we get, bond over the most. We, it's definitely what we bond. I was gonna say it's not, not the first thing we bonded over, but maybe besides being mother, mother and child, I think the that first thing the, that was the first <laughs> thing that we bonded over because no. like it was around you, like it was your room was all Star Wars. It was it was your room, and then you put me in that yep. room, and it became my room, and then it became your room. Yep. My, my Star Wars collection became your room. Lots of action figures on the wall. So that. we decided that um, we have a lot of different things that we can talk about yep. for Star Wars, but yep. we thought the best thing would be would be movies. Yep. All right. Yeah. So um, So we have some questions that we are going to answer about, well. All right, so what's our first them. question? First question is, what is your favorite trilogy in Star Wars? Okay, so there, at this point in 2024, there are three tr trilogies. Yep. When Star Wars first came out, it was, was the, it was the, it wasn't. It wasn't called the original trilogy. No, it, wasn't. it was just the Star Wars trilogy. Yep. And then surprisingly, in the late '90s, we got a second trilogy. Yep. We were like all in shock that that happened. Yep. And then when did the la last trilogy come out? Oh my goodness. Um, it's 20... 2015 It started and then it ended in twenty nineteen. So another 15, 20 years later, another another trilogy. Yep. We were surprised. Yep. Right. Um. So which which one? So am I gonna answer first? Yeah, so okay. what is your favorite? Is it the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, or the sequel trilogy? So, I was born in 1970. Yep. I was six years old in 1977. Yep. When the original Star Wars came out. Yep. Episode four. Yep. A New Hope, but it was just called New Hope. But then it, yeah. Anyway, we all was, know. It was just called Star Wars in... I would have to say, because I was born in the 1970s, and I was, I was born when the original Star Wars came out, yep. that the original trilogy is my favorite trilogy i like all i people will always say this they'll be like you know what if when the new movies came out what what if the movie's bad and i was like no star wars is bad yeah all star wars is is just 
more Star Wars, and I'm happy for more Star Wars. Yeah. May not be my favorite Star Wars. Yeah. But I am all for all Star Wars. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I I have I would say the original trilogy. Nothing can nothing can probably live up to that because mm -hmm. I was six years old, nine years old, twelve years old when those came out. And I was very impressionable at the yeah. time, and those memories will just stick with me for forever. So yeah, I the original trilogy. Yeah. What about you? Um, I have to say, I mean, I do love all three trilogies in their own way, but I think my favorite trilogy is the prequel trilogy. You like the prequel trilogy? I do like my prequels. I mean, I was born in 2004, like one year before Revenge of the Sith came out. Obviously, I didn't see it in theaters. I was just in little toddler when Revenge of the Sith came out and my and you and dad were not about to take me to go see the first Star Wars yeah, movie no, that was that rated PG-13. Yeah. You, you didn't see it in the theaters you saw them all on TV or on DVD on, or, or like on the computer or on an iPad. Yeah. You, you, I think I remember you always like watching the Phantom Menace like the Darth Maul section like you oh the duel of the fates yeah i think yeah. that was your favorite thing i mean because uh, i mean darth maul was the first character to have a double bladed lightsaber it was cool. it he was, was very cool when he uh, was, ignited that lightsaber we're all like two lights one coming out that the other what do you know so me and dad what we really loved about that yeah about the darth maul character was that he was doing kung fu or what or what was called is also called wushu yeah um but it's a style of kung fu and because dad teaches kung fu we yeah. could really appreciate it like he was yeah. oh my god he just did a butterfly kick yeah. like it was just we we had you know you had gone from the very linear very japanese style um sword play in the original trilogy mm -hmm. and then you come to the the, the um prequels and it was so much more fluid and we so we were really it's, impressed with it's that it's really we were, fast yes and, yeah i mean i do i yeah I and mean, that's, that's how like that's you actually like things. spin a staff around is how like an actual like real life like wooden staff that's how you twirl say, a staff you, and stuff you and you've such. learned kung, kung fu so i know you, how to yeah, yeah so you, you know the moves and I stuff do. like that yeah you know it's so yeah no i i i have some great memories from seeing the prequels i got to see them on the theaters yes i got to see did. everything in the theaters i mean that may change because phantom menace is coming back to theaters on may 1st oh, that's right that's right we need to for the anniversary we need to book our tickets so we, we do can, need to book that way tickets. i can go see phantom menace in theaters uh, so my memory of i think we're going to jump ahead mm. we, we had that question but we'll, we'll jump back to the other question we but will. i will i will is I will. that when the phantom menace came out um People all around the world were standing in line for weeks, <laughs> waiting to get into the theaters. Oh, wow. And the night before, t the, the, instead of instead of waiting in line to go see the movie, you had to wait in line to get tickets. Yeah, That's a weird thing. Now you just do everything online, but yeah. you had to wait in line to get tickets. And so people were standing up, sitting and standing and camping in line for for weeks. Are um, and here in our local town, yep. the theater that we were going to see it, they wouldn't allow overnight standing oh, or really? camping oh, oh so right. the earliest cool. you could get there was like four or five o'clock in the morning so That's i just early. i decided the night before that i was gonna have your dad bring me there and so i made little treats i made little goodie bags and i was like all right you're gonna drive me and drop me off at the theater and hopefully i can get tickets and i was i think you stood there by yourself no there was i was number 15 or 16 in line what really yeah and wow. there was like all like 15 16 people in front of me and i passed out these little star wars baggies and i was like um, and they were, i had handmade them they were out of um star wars wrapping paper yeah and i was like may the force be with you happy star wars day right you did that that was the first time i ever did it that's the first time you ever did it. and then you did it again for i've done it for see. i've done it for every movie since then yeah so it was like a little party it was so great it was such a community and i actually met do you know joe white yeah I met him in that line. Oh, so that's this story. Because I think I, I, you've told this story before whenever we've seen Joe as yep. well. But and, that's where I met him. Yeah. And also, so there was then there was um, an old classmate of mine that was also in the line. So there was somebody that oh. I already knew, and then there were some people, new people that I met. And there's people that I still see. I cross paths like at conventions and stuff today that were yeah. in that line of, of 
I mean, it got, the line got longer. Yeah, yeah. Of um, course. It, it was a party. So that yes, the prequels. I I have such fond memories. Plus, um, uh, my mom, your grandma went with us to so when we went back the week later to actually see the movie. We had the we had, they also wouldn't have midnight movies. So the early we the first movie was at seven a.m. I think or eight a.m. Oh, and wow. so we went and saw it at that time. <laughs> so Nana was there. Um, so I have fond memories. So of prequels. tickets went on. Man, tickets are like a lot different now because like when like force awakens or last jedi or rise of skywalker came out tickets would go on sale like uh, like two or three months before the actual yes movie now came out. now that's the way it is so you get like, huh. they have because everything's online um i think it, it that it did shift that way somewhere along the way maybe for attack of the clones or um revenge, revenge of, the of the sith, sith. But that first one, you had to stand in line to get the tickets. You, okay. get, you got physical, physical tickets. Physical tickets. These yeah. days, you don't get don't do physical tickets <laughs> anymore. Um, but yeah. So, is there any which movie in that um, in the prequels is your favorite? Do you I was supposed favorite? to ask you that. I know. I'm going to ask you, then you can ask me. Okay. Sure. Um, I think you know this already, and I think a lot of other people may know this. It's Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith is a good one. Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie. Okay. Um, I have the high ground. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I mean, back then, when I was younger, I was just like, oh, no, the prequels ain't good. But then when I got older, I was just like, wait, I don't have to like follow other people down the line of like not liking or liking something. I'm just like, I can choose my own opinion. I'm just like, in my opinion. Star Wars episode, episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, is my favorite Star Wars movie. And, I mean, it's the first Star Wars movie that really shows the Clone Wars in action. Mm -hmm. It also gives us the first time for seeing the clone troopers in their Phase 2 armor, as well as, like, all their unique different colors. Mm -hmm. Like, all, like, the blue, the red, the yeah. gold, the green and such. It's yeah, they moved from the, 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 that white starkness. Yeah. Right? To be a little bit more... You saw that they had personalities and yeah. stuff like that, which was really cool. I mean, you you have Hayden Christensen as Anakin, mm -hmm. who is just amazing. Natalie Portman as Padme. You and I loved all her costumes. That's I think oh, that, yes. that's probably one of my favorite parts of the trilogies, is you mean, when Princess Leia had some cool... Had some... You know, she changed outfits. Yeah. But... Padme's outfits were just like you every was, 10 minutes every 10 minutes every scene she was in a different one you're yeah. like <gasps> yeah <laughs> you McGregor as Obi-Wan mm -hmm. you have the legendary E. McDermott as Palpatine who is just an absolute star in the movie because of like he's so manipulative as his chancellor mm -hmm. persona but when he goes full-on Sith Lord he is crazy he's as we people have called him over the years, he's the puppet master because he orchestrated everything. And you know, I think my favorite part of that movie is um, the uh, Yoda and Palpatine duel. Duel. Yeah. I mean, to see Yoda like go all out, like yeah, crazy. Like you're like, cause you're you know what you're used to is him like all hunched over in his little cane, and then yeah. all of a sudden he's like, Whoa. he goes full. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then you have like Tamar Morrison as mm -hmm. all the clone troopers. And at first all the clone troopers were just like they weren't really they didn't really have any personality personality to them. They had like color on their armor, which gave them like each sort of identity, mm -hmm. but that wasn't really but their personalities didn't really come out until the Clone Wars show. Yeah. Um so that led that to you. Yeah. I think maybe probably that after seeing the Clone Wars, which is very, and that's a whole other topic that we'll talk it, about. We will talk but about that. But that's that that is pivotal in your, I think, your fandom and your joy of Star Absolutely. Wars. Absolutely. So I think that then that kind of relates back. Like you can appreciate that movie more yeah. because of what you know now. Yeah. Right. So no, I totally I I can see that. But also you have like like yeah you have palpatine as the main villain but also you have christopher lee as count dooku who christopher lee was in so much like even before revenge of the sith and he was already such a famous actor he was in lord of the rings he was dracula mm -hmm. he was in james bond and such and though he's only on screen for maybe like five to ten minutes his acting is and as the sinister Count Dooku, it's very good. Mm -hmm. And then you have Matt Wood as General, oh, General Grievous. Grievous. General Grievous is pretty cool. 
I just like I mean what when all his lightsabers start going. Yeah. Like I mean, that's impressive. So in the two thousand and three Clone Wars series, if you hadn't seen that series, yeah. you had no clue who this character was or what he was capable mm -hmm. of. So like if you if your first time seeing Grievous was Revenge of the Sith, mm -hmm. you were shocked at like Oh my god, like, this guy has lightsabers, and then, wait, he has more arms, and then he has four lightsabers coming out, but then... It was, it, no, it was crazy. It was neat. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my, my other second part, I, another part is that's my favorite of that movie, is seeing Luke and Leia born. Yeah. Seeing baby Luke and baby Leia. Yeah. Just, oh my god, touches my heart. But also, one last thing, one yeah. last thing. It's the introduction of the 501st Legion into Star Wars. True, 100%. That, as a 501st-er, yeah. when we saw that, like, you just like, oh my god. Now, they yeah. also do really bad things, and so then you're like, what? That's what you put our name on? But, it, it, but it was still cool. The, to, to, the, that, be, the, the 501st, that name became canon, yeah. was so, like, just like important to us like you had you had the 501st like the 501st legion existed before um revenge of the sith came out and george lucas saw us saw the 501st he's like he's like you guys follow vader well i'll make you a i'll vader's make you fist. i'll make you vader's <laughs> fist in the movies and i will have you follow vader into the jedi temple and mm -hmm. wipe out all the Jedi. It's just, I mean, I know. it's so cool. Like, it's now that cool. I'm getting, is, yeah. I mean, I was born into the 501st Legion because you and Dad are part of the 501st yeah. Legion. So I'm a, what I like to call myself, a 501st baby. You are totally a 501st baby. I, I was wearing, I made a maternity officer's <coughs> uniform when I was pregnant with you so that I yep. could be in, be in my uniform, but still. Yeah. I marched in a parade. Yep. Of, yeah. So the, yes, you were definitely a five first baby. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah. that's the reason that Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie. But what is your favorite movie in the original trilogy? I know this answer. You know this answer. I do. You do. I it's do. always the same answer. Yes, it is. I try to think about it. I watch <coughs> the movies and I go, well, maybe, oh yeah, I really like that. Mm -hmm. But when I come back to it every single time, yep. I have to say Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie. And I was trying earlier today because I knew we were going to have this conversation. And I was like, why? Why is Empire Strikes Back my favorite? I think that it probably, in a way, had the most story. It had the cliffhanger. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> we, we were in different locations. We're on Hoth, and then you're on Dagobah, and then you're in Cloud City, and you're near, um Star Destroyer. You're on the Star Destroyer. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just these different environments. Um but I think it always comes back to the fact, always comes back to the fact, mm. that I will always be a Luke girl. Yep. Yep. Luke is my first crush, I would have to say. <laughs> and I always have always, always loved. He's my favorite character. Everybody goes, what's your favorite Star Wars character? Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker will always be my favorite character. And he looked the best in Empire Strikes Back. I mean, you're he not like, wrong. The, that, his Dagobah outfit is just, is my favorite outfit. Yeah. Um, and then, well, and then I always, um, the X-Wing pilot. Oh, look. Oh, my little, my little Luke X-Wing pilot is yeah. orange. I love that. Yeah. But then, you know, you got introduced to Yoda. Yep. And, like, it was just, like, fascinating, I think, when we, when we first saw it. To be like, he was just so real. Like, he yeah. came across as such a real character. Yeah. And so it was this alien, but it had, like, you were attached to this alien. Mm -hmm. You never questioned that he was an alien. You just, he was just a character. I mean, it doesn't help that, like, you can feel really connected to him because he's a physical puppet that moves and yes. such. And, like, right. It was, like, back, we didn't have CGI. You, yeah, in that you feel way. like he's actually there because yeah. he's an actual, like, puppet who's, like, who's being voiced by Frank Oz. Right. But then, you know, there was the love triangle between Luke and Han, yeah. Luke, Han and Halea, yeah. you know, and then we find out, oh, well, that didn't work out. Ooh. But back then, in, in 1980, we didn't know that. We didn't know the answer, no. right? So everybody was like, oh, she's, Leia should be with Luke. No, Leia should be with Han, you know. Um, and then 
the training, Luke, all the training that Luke goes through for yep. Jedi, mm -hmm. uh, to become a Jedi, and like with, you know, Yoda on his back and everything, and then for, at the end when Luke goes up against Vader, and that fight is just awesome and amazing. It is a good. Fight. And he was just like, I am your father, and everybody's minds blown. Like what? Well, wait, wait a minute. I mean, and so then we left that theater thinking. Is he lying to him? Mm. Is he trying to trick him? Or is this real? Like, is it... And we had to wait three years. Three years. Yeah, it was 1980. You had to wait till 1983 just yes, to, to actually be like, is it true? Is, is it, it true? not true? And we debated it. Like, is it true? Is it not true? Yeah. Is he lying to him to kind of sway him over? You know, keep him off, uh, you know, off balance? Or is it true? And if it's true, then how is, how is that even possible? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Um... So it was just, you know, the, and the snow, Hoth, and the Adats, and the Tauntauns, Cloud City. It was so beautiful. The introduction of Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba I mean, Fett. come on, Boba Fett. Bo it's Boba Fett. Like, he, I mean, it's not the first time that he appeared. He appeared in the holiday special in 1978, yes. but not but a lot I of people Claire knew, I knew, I Claire knew of that. that. Yeah. Um, um, but when you saw Boba Fett, you're just like, man, he's just really cool dude with really cool armor he's the one who found han solo and he's the one i who... know like the whole scene and then um you know luke you know, sneaking around the cloud city yep. and then later shouting like it's just every part of that movie there's not a bad part of that movie no there isn't there is i mean there's no bad part of any of the trilogy the the, the pre the original trilogy yeah but it was. It will just always be my favorite. And I think the cliffhanger, you know, like hanging there, and then you know, Han getting taken by Boba. Boba and what, what will happen to him? What yep. will they do next? Mm -hmm. When the the original, the first one, A New Hope. Yep. We didn't know that there was going to be another one at that point. No. Like it was, and and I was also six, seven, eight, so I was very, very young. Yeah. But it was like it was a full enclosed movie, right? Yeah. Like, you the the. George had no clue it was going to take off like right. that. Right. I mean, how would anybody know? But no it, it, if it never expanded to anything else, it could just be its own movie. Yeah. Right? Darth Vader spins off into the, you know, whoa, and he, you know, they won. Yay. Yeah. Right? They protected the galaxy. Then you end up in the second one, and you're like, oh, there's more going on. Yep. And the Empire, you know, the Empire gets the upper hand, and now you're left going, what's going to happen? Yeah. Right? So then you had something to look forward to. So... It will. It will just always be my favorite. There's never a time I think when um, it's a really good film it's with really good great film. acting. I mean, so I mean I've heard this story many times, but as far as I know, the only people who knew that Vader was oh, yeah. Luke's father was Mark himself, uh, and George. I <laughs> think Mark and George, and I think the at James and Earl Jones, of course, because yes, he's the he one says who's... the words. Because in the filming, they didn't say those words. Yeah, it was right. something else. Yeah, it was something yeah. else. So it was Mark, George, and James Earl Jones yeah. who, those were the only three people out of everyone who knew that Vader was the father of Luke. Like Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher, mm -hmm. they learned it when they saw the premiere of Empire Strikes Back. And I, I mean, Mark has said this story to on like Jimmy Fallon or something like that. All right, Walker. So we're back. Yep. So. Yesterday we were recording, yep, and um, we talked for a really long time. Yes, we did. And then it stopped. Well, we went and checked to see if it was still recording. And it stopped at and the twenty-six had, mark. 26, it had, it's twenty-six. It minutes had stopped mark. at the twenty-six. Twenty-six. Lucky well, not twenty-six seconds. Twenty-six minutes. Um, yep. so, um, moment, and we had just finished talking about which is which film in the star wars trilogy that we pref that was our favorite was mm -hmm. our favorite film yep you had said revenge of the sith revenge of the sith in you prequels said... and i said empire strikes back yep now... i still love it i had no it, it i when we checked it it said i said there that's it's the perfect film there's no bad part yeah and i, and I still i stand by that i know you do so 24 hours later we are back again yep so if our Cropping looks a little weird. Our hair looks different. That, that would be the reason. We're wearing the same the, clothes. It's the next day. Yes, it's the next day. But um, so we had more things that we wanted to talk about, and that 
was now that we've talked about trilogy, trilogy our favorite film we wanted to talk about what was what was your first memory of seeing a star wars film walker you can go first star the star wars the clone wars movie from 2008 2008. 2008. That was the year Katie was born. Yep. I mean, I, uh, I think it came out like it came out in the fall before September. he was born. It came out before he was born. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I brought you mm -hmm. to see the Clone Wars when they released the first three, three or four, four episodes, episodes. Yeah. and they um, released it into the movie theaters. Yep. And we, when we were talking before, I wasn't sure if it, if it. I think it was just that night. I think it was just a one you had to see it that night. Otherwise, you just caught it on. What was it running on? Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. And we saw it as a family. You, me, and Dad. Yep. And I got pretty emotional because it was like to be there in the movie theater mm -hmm. with my child seeing Star Wars yeah. when I had seen it. So if it was 2008, mm -hmm. you said you were four and a half. Yep. And I was um, because I'm four because me and Kane are four and a half years apart. Yeah. Um, I saw Star Wars my first time when I was six. Yeah. So it was a couple of years difference, but it was just it was kind of it was it was poetry. It was poetry. It was, right? it was so nice, and I it I, was poetry. It, it run. I, I can't remember the exact oh, one, George <laughs> Lucas screen crush, right? Says, <laughs> that's what George Lucas said. That's a, yeah. That's... So I um, yeah I got emotional. Yeah. Being able to see the big logo, mm -hmm. it they like um do the the, the crawl, but mm -hmm. the, it was the big logo. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, that like, yellow. I got choked up. Yeah. So, um, so that, that was your first memory of seeing a Star Wars film. Mm -hmm. I have to say, that I can't remember what my first memory is, of seeing a Star Wars film. Mm. I most people have been like, I saw a New Hope. I was born when New. I was six years old when a New Hope came yep. out. But I have no memory of the first time I saw that film. It was like there, I there, I have memories of when there wasn't Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I remember the, the life that I lived. I remember the things that I did when mm -hmm. I was somewhere between the ages of I, I don't know what my my earliest memory was, but up until about age six, I do remember running in the streets of South Boston mm -hmm. and playing games without any ever any thought of Star Wars. Yeah, and then there was Star Wars, and then there was Star Wars Forever. Yeah. And there has been Star Wars ever since. Ever since. Yeah. But I don't have the memory. And it makes me kind of sad. I don't yeah. have the memory of the, that first experience. It was just, it, be, it like I became one with it. Mm -hmm. So I have a vague memory of seeing Star Wars at the drive in mm -hmm. with your Aunt Karen. I'm pretty sure it was your Aunt Karen. Mm -hmm. um, sitting in the back of a station wagon. <laughs> watching Star Wars on the on, on outside yep. the drive-in, I believe I saw it at the at a movie theater in South Boston, a little, little neighborhood movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, probably Uncle Greg probably took me, but I don't remember the first time. Uh, Empire Strikes Back, I have more memory of because I was nine when yep. that one came out, three years later. But my like my most vivid memory of that was that it was playing at a little local theater that would have dollar nights um, yep. like Tuesday I think Tuesday night was about dollar night and it was the Wallison theater the Wally mm -hmm. and all the kids all my siblings my cousins who if they were visiting or the kids in the neighborhood yep. we'd all just kind of be sitting around mm -hmm. like you know like what are we gonna do I don't know what we're gonna do and we would all go let's go see Empire Strikes Back and we would all pile into Nano's station wagon Without seatbelts. Without seat without seatbelts. Nice. We would stuff little the little um, hug juice drinks mm -hmm. in our pockets and candy, because um, even though the the, the, the that we movie theater was bad cheap, kids we were no. sneaking in <laughs> food, and we would go and see Empire Strikes Back. And that summer, I I think I saw it ten times. Um, but I remember that when Vader said. Luke, when he says no i'm your father mm -hmm. i was like i just remember being like yeah mind blown mind yeah. blown like how could that possibly i think everybody was like in the world and yeah. everybody was just like what well what? is he telling the truth or is he not or is he, is he just is vader just messing with luke or is vader actually luke's father yeah i i couldn't i everybody was wondering it was it i can't remember it i'm not sure if i, I 
we talked about this last night. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we captured it on camera because I didn't go back and watch the footage. I don't think footage. we did. Um, but yeah, was you know was it Vader just tricking him mm -hmm. to be like I'm your father and trying to trick him into joining him, mm -hmm. or was it true? And we had to wait three years for that information to find out if that was true. And that brings me to my next memory, which would be Return of the Jedi. And the first time I saw Return of the Jedi, that one is probably my most vivid of being a child. Yeah. Um, I was then 12. 11. 11. 12. 11. 12. <laughs> 1983. 12. Yeah. 12, right. Do the math. Um, I was 12 when Return of the Jedi came out. Yeah. I had started to read the novel. Mm -hmm. Um, because they released the novel prior to those movies coming it's out. It's so weird to see that I know, that it is kind of weird. But I had read most of it. Mm -hmm. I, I had read up to Luke revealing, or Luke finding out that Leia was his sister in on Dagobah. Okay. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched that movie. Um, I mean, they should, they should have watched the movie. If... <laughs> they should have watched the movie by now. It's, it's been out for 40 it's, years. Yeah, it's been out for a long time. 41, so. 40, 41 years. Yep. Something like that. Um... So I had read the book, and so mm -hmm. I knew, and so everybody else around me did, probably didn't know, and I knew, and I, it was kind of cool because I felt <laughs> like I had like this little secret. Yeah. But the movies back then, if my memory serves me correctly, Star Wars movies came out on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. and I was too young to like, you know, go and stand in line by myself at that point. But I had talked Nana, your your grandmother, my mom, um, into letting us skip school on the Friday. Mm. That um, that the movie the, the first Friday the movie came out to go see Return of the Jedi. Mm. I was in middle school and I I convinced Nana to to let us stay at, to go to the earliest showing. Mm -hmm. And so I got myself all dressed up in black, so I was like Luke, mm -hmm. black shirt, black pants, everything black. And then I had my mom take Auntie Kelly's hair. She had this long hair like Princess Leia. Mm -hmm. Her original hair was blonde rather than. Um, brown but I she had this long hair and I had her braid the hair like Leia in the Ewok village yeah I don't know if she was wearing a dress she clearly was not wearing some like leather dress but no. she yeah it, she at least had the hair Auntie Cory was there but I can't I don't think I had her dress up any as anything but um it would have been funny if she was an Ewok because she was super little well her and Uncle Ray should have been in well Ewok. so Auntie, Cor Auntie Cory was six and then Uncle Ray my brother Ray was Three, yep. and the plan was that my mom was going to bring us to the movie theater, drop us off, and then she was going to take Ray, who was three, to the neighbors, and he was going to they were going to babysit him. Mm -hmm. But once she got there, and I, maybe it's because she saw the whole long line, because mm -hmm. there was a lot of people coming, she decided just to stay. So she stood in line too. And we were I remember us being like the tenth people in line for that Friday morning show. Yeah, and. We were so super excited, and mm -hmm. like I said, I think I even had the book in my pocket. Like you I had the book in your pocket. I think I was reading the book. I'm pretty sure I was reading, the, reading book the book as while we were standing in line, oh. and we got in and we saw the movie, and of course I knew that. I, there was part of me that kind of was disappointed that I knew that. I was mm. kind of I was like, oh, it would have been really nice had I that been revealed. I had seen it with everybody else, but yeah. at the same time, like I said, it was like knowing this little secret. Yeah. But, and then lo and behold, like, you know, all the way to the end. And after the movie was over, we came out and the line had wrapped around the building, mm -hmm. literally wrapped around the building. And it was, um, the big building that is what Dave and Buster's is now. It's so, it's so weird because I, I can, not, now that I know that Dave and Buster's is a theater, I can see it now but when i was younger i had no clue that dave and busters used to be a movie theater it was a it was a movie theater and then it became a circuit city which was like a like a best buy oh okay and then when that closed then it became dave and busters oh so it was this big giant square building and it wrapped around it and we just i after we got out of that first movie we got back in line and we saw it a second time and it was so cool so yeah. those were my first memories of the original trilogy, which is my favorite trilogy. Yep. Um, but then Walker, I was going to ask, mm. do you have a favorite beyond? You said you saw the Clone Wars, and that was your yep. first memory. But you don't have huge, huge memories of nope. it because you were pretty young. Yeah. What is your first? What is your favorite memory of seeing Star Wars in the movie theater? Any of the Star Wars? What is my favorite memory? Mm-hmm. We've seen. Um, 
the entire sequel trilogy, Two, Rogue One, one Solo. Go, yep. That's it. And, and Clone Wars. And Clone Wars. So but I don't really remember Clone Wars because, like you said, I was four. Yeah. I guess when Rogue One came out and it's at, it's at the end of the film yeah. and the uh, rebel fleet troopers are about to board the tent to four, but the door is stuck and it won't open. And then you hear a loud noise and then you hear Vader breathing and then you see his lightsaber ignite and then then you realize oh wait this is wait what's happening and then you and then you get this really awesome scene of Vader like it's full on Vader just being like so powerful just like stripping away blasters from the rebels just so casually just blocking blaster bolts and such and hitting them back into the rebels it was such a great scene it was something that we had never seen vader do before because mm -hmm. like in, in the original trilogy we never saw him fight like yeah, he was very like almost robotic you know rebels but then rogue one just blows it out of the water and yeah. just like get get Raise that level absolute one of the coolest Star Wars scenes in, like, out of all the movies and also probably just all, in all of Star Wars because mm -hmm. it's such, it's become very iconic now, especially like those sort of hallway scenes, but Vader yeah. was the original person I was gonna say that, to do the, that. The Luke in the, uh... Darth Maul. No, the, well, Darth Maul does it, but Luke with the, um... Dark Troopers. The Dark Troopers. Yep. Same thing. That's a very that, cool that was, scene That was very well. cool. Um... What about you? My, so I already talked about like my first memories of the original trilogy when I first star Star Wars, but which are hold are near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. But I think when the Phantom Menace came out, mm -hmm. like the fact that we were getting new films was just a shock for the system, yeah. right? Because we thought it was over. You, well, you had those three films. There was, you know, I remember reading an article when I was a kid that George said there was going to be nine films, but then he said, I never said that. Mm. Or, you know, there was always, like, controversy and debate. Mm. And then, lo and behold... 16 years later. He, th we get this announcement that there's going to be Star Wars films, right? Yeah. So we're so, like, I was just in awe. I was like, how how is this possible? Yeah. Like, I am so grateful. I'm so happy. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So now I'm an adult, though, right? Yeah. Now I'm married and I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. And so now, like, I don't have to have my mom drive me. I don't, right? I, I don't have to, like, I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah. So when The Phantom Menace came out, people stood in line mm -hmm. for, like, weeks. It was crazy. Like, it was all, all in. Yes. They're, like, in California, people camped out for weeks. Like, it was this whole thing. I think it was really, like, the time of when people started. I think Star Wars was really the one where people started standing in line. I'm Actually, I've seen pictures of um, 1977, and there, people weren't standing in line. But I'm not mm. sure. I don't think they camped. But Phantom Menace, people were camping out. Wow. Now, the town that we saw the film in, um, or we were going to see the film in, they didn't allow that. They weren't, you, you weren't able to stay overnight. Yeah. Um, and, but the movie theater wanted to, like all the movie theaters were doing all these kind of things. And so tickets went on sale. This was also a weird thing because originally when I was a kid, you just bought the tickets the day the you want, the day you wanted to see the movie, you got there and you bought the ticket. Yep. Phantom Menace was, oh, you buy the tickets like a week ahead or something yeah. or, you know, I, I think I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but you bought your tickets ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, you couldn't do it online. Nope. <laughs> Because there was no there was like, no online there was no internet back in yeah. 1999 1999 there was no online ticketing nope. so I had heard that people that um, the theater we wanted to see it which was was no longer that one that I told you about when I and when I saw Return of the Jedi but it had moved to another part of town mm -hmm. and I convinced your dad to drive so mom my mom didn't drive me but your dad drove me. <laughs> At five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the, the morning. morning to go stand in line when tickets. I think we're gonna the ticket box. The box office was gonna open at nine, I believe. So you I waited four hours. I'm pretty outside. sure I waited four hours. So the night before, I decided, okay, I'm gonna do this because all the news was talking about it, and I was like, I I have to I have to have the tickets for the first. I can't not have it for the first showing. Mm -hmm. Like I can't start hearing things. I want to be there for the first showing. So. But because, you know, me, Walker, I like, I'm like, I want to have a party wherever I go, right? Yeah. I do. That's so right. I stayed up all night, 
hand making little Star Wars goodie bags out of Star Wars wrapping paper. Mm -hmm. And I stuffed them with stickers and some candy. And I made as many as I could. And when I got to the theater, there was about 15 people in line. And I passed out these little bags and out to everybody in the in the line. Mm -hmm. I made friends, friends that I have to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was like, I had a, um, somebody who I went to high school with was in line and I met mm -hmm. his coworkers and it was, we became this little community. Mm -hmm. And then we all agreed that we would get tickets for the same show, mm. which I think it was like eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, like it was one show at midnight and then the, then it, they started showing it at like seven o'clock in the morning. So I didn't see the first one, but I saw the first one in our theater. Mm -hmm. um, so we got, we all got together to meet and we bought donuts for everybody. And donuts. We, we made a thank you card for the, the theater because they were so nice to us. Mm. Um, we gave them, do we gave them donuts. And I also got to go with the, with my mom. Um, you brought I, Nana? I brought Nana. I got her tickets cause she had gone for, the other, all the other movies so she wanted to see the new movie mm. so I remember just sitting in the row with my mom and your dad mm -hmm. my husband and seeing again like seeing that logo come after all that long time yeah to see the Star Wars logo and the opening crawl and opening crawl mm. with new words that I have never read before yeah new words new characters it was like it was like surreal because i had seen star wars i seen a new hope empire strikes back return of the jedi so many times i knew like i i'm i knew those words by mm -hmm. heart right mm -hmm. to see the logo come up and then see these worlds were words scrolling through the star field and i have, didn't know what those words were mm -hmm. i got so super emotional yeah. so like the Phantom Menace reintroducing Star Wars into the world for those people who weren't as avid as I was because Star Wars never went away for me between yeah. 1983 and 1999. Yeah. It was still live and mm -hmm. breathing for me, but for everybody else to kind of come I back mean, again and join in mm -hmm. and then it for it to be, it's really has been there ever since. Yeah, you know, some people will be like, "Oh no, it faded," but there's there's been so much more. Yeah, the dark times are the, really the dark the times. Nineteen eighty four through nineteen ninety eight were dark times. Well, you had the you had the Thrawn trilogy. You know? I did, but most people don't read a lot. Most people yeah, most people books. did probably. It probably, wasn't most it wasn't mainstream, but for the average person, yeah, it didn't come back until nineteen ninety nine. So yeah. I would have to say that that going to see the Phantom Menace after all that time. Mm -hmm. As an adult, seeing it, a brand new Star Wars was just probably like one of my most favorite memories. And I had ma I made friends in that line, mm -hmm. who are still friends to this day. Um, there were friends that I, it was just, it was like the world coming together. And all the excitement that was in the world mm -hmm. around that, just, it was just amazing. So, yeah. and it probably, la that really kind of launched my, though I've been a Star Wars fan forever, it really launched my involvement in the community. Mm. I think that's really why that that was well, about right. Yeah. So that that's my memory. Yeah, that's my memory. It's your memory. We hope that you guys have some really cool memories, yeah. and maybe some of these things remind you guys of memories that you have mm -hmm. of seeing the Star Wars films. Um, I can't wait for future Star Wars films. Oh, I know the uh, New Jedi Order and the Mando and Grogu film and Dave Filoni's uh, New Republic and. Uh, Imperial Remnant film, the yep. Dawn of the Jedi film. I don't know. Oh, today we're recording this on, uh, what's today? March 21st. Today's March 21st. Yep. There, we, there was an announcement from StarWars.com and all the Disney slash Lucasfilm channels that tickets for Phantom Menace, which I just spoke about, mm -hmm. I get to relive it. Um, go on sale tomorrow on the and 22nd. I, and um, I will finally get to live it. You'll get to see it on the big screen. I'll get to see it on the big screen. I'm so excited for that. Now this is pod racing. Oh, this is pod <laughs> racing. It will be really cool. Um, that's what we had talked about the Darth Maul scene. Yeah. Because you had you had mentioned that like yep. oh, and the, and the music. Oh, I can't. Man, I, cannot, I can't wait. I can't wait to see like see Duel of the Fates on the big screen. It'll be awesome. Such so, nice so we, I will have to get online tomorrow yeah. and find out what time. We'll have to, we'll have to reach out to friends, see, see if anybody wants to join us. Agreed. To see it. Yeah. 
but yeah, so it's the, what, what's the anniversary? 25th? No. Yep. 25th. 25th, yeah. yes. Very cool. Yeah. We're going to see The Phantom Menace in mm -hmm. May. May 3rd, right? May 1st. May 1st? May 1st. Oh, I the other, because the other thing was, that's what it was. Yes, May 1st. Mm -hmm. May 2nd and May 3rd, tickets for Star Wars Celebration Japan go on oh, sale. Oh, that's right. So I saw something about, like, I think May 2nd is for maybe the Jedi Masters. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the VIP tickets are on the 2nd and then regular um, tickets go on sale. So on that's what that is. Okay. That's what that is. And then we got to see that really cool artwork. Yeah, that was a really cool art artwork. Uh, so, yeah. We're gonna have to figure that out for a uh, Star Wars celebration. If we well, wait, well, well, that's a whole other topic. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll find. We'll but we'll lots assume. of lots of exciting Star Wars news. Uh, we wrap up our little uh, talk about Star Wars. We're gonna use our Star Wars conversation cards. We are gonna always end our our little chats here, our little discussions. So I um, went the this. first time. Now it's your now turn. Now it's my turn. Okay. I need, no, I need to. I need to shuffle these so that like good I good idea because so we don't know which ones which. Right? Yeah. I'm gonna close my eyes and see what I can pull up. Technology. I don't, I don't like the technology. Uh, All right, technology. Star Wars conversation cards. An ATST is walking down the street like the Ewoks. You and your neighbors work together to bring it down. What's the plan? How do we take it down in the in this neighborhood? I mean, at first I was going to say roll a bunch of logs on it and let it, like, trip over it, but since our street is in a hill, I don't know how you how we would do that. So, uh... ATST is walking down our street. Maybe put a bunch of Sweet. cars in front of it and let it trip that way, or... Okay. Well, we have some pretty resource resourceful neighbors. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Maybe... Honestly... This, can I give you my answer? Sure. If there was an ATST walking down the street, I think it would be super cool, and I don't want to take it down. I would probably be like Chewy in the Ewoks and hijack it. Yeah, hijack it. Yeah. ATST jacket. ATST jacket. <laughs> right, car jacket. Yeah. I would take it over, and I would take ownership of it. I wonder when I knock it down. I want my own AT, my own little chicken walker. What I mean. What do you think other people would say about that? What are they gonna say? I have a big giant chicken walker in my backyard. With blasters on it. But I could, like, it could be water guns. <gasps> water guns. Oh, God. An ATA. <laughs> they would be like, like, we could bring it to, like, the Flag Day Festival. Like, at the fireworks spray, and all the kids would have fun. That's quite the imagination. I have, I have a fabulous imagination. Yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> So I would say I would not take it down. I would actually take it over. I, I mean, can't think. I would want to destroy it, but I guess you're right. I guess I would. I guess I would also probably want to hijack it and keep it for myself as well, because it's an ATST. And... ATST. We can make it into a um, a fort. Ooh. Like you'd have it like a like a it would be like a treehouse. Yeah. You could live in it. You know what we'd have to do? We have to like expand the head because. That head's just not big enough. I'm sure you've gut it out. We, gut have, we it don't out. have to take it walking. We can yeah. just gut it out and live in it. Well, if, what Don't if you we did want to walk it around? Well, then we can't gut it out. That's true. So, that would be our answer. Yeah. We wouldn't take it down. We'd take ownership of it. Yeah. Just like Chewie and the Ewoks. I mean, we would We would take it down to a extent. we take out the previous inhabitants, throw there them out, and then... Yeah. we take down take the Imperials. Us. And then, and then take it take it over. Yep, take it for yeah. ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's our answer. So thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And, and join us and find us on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you can also contact us via email at myexperienceyourexperience at gmail.com. Am I and right? You are correct. Yes, I am. Yep. Okay. And... Have an awesome day, and we will catch you in the next episode. May the Force be with you. May the Force be with you.